Hey, everybody. Um, I see we got folks that are still coming on. Um, so I'm Carlos Clanton, for those who don't know. I am the Ward 3 member and vice chairman of the Norfolk City School Board. Um, and I am so excited to be kicking off um, uh, part of my new engagement um, within my community here, um, here in Norfolk, um, which is Carlos Clanton Live, uh, Live with Carlos Clanton, um, an opportunity um, for me to share not only my thoughts and opinions, but to share information with the community. Um, and I'm so excited tonight um, to have to kick off this uh, exciting new adventure uh, than none other than uh, Ms. Sharice Newsom, who is the um, president of the Norfolk Council of PTAs, to share information about that dynamic group um, and to also encourage you to get involved. Um, so I'm about to bring Sharice in here. Look, y'all working with this new technology and everything. So y'all bear with me. Let's see how we make this work. But I'm going to bring Sharice in. Um, there she is. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Welcome, Sharice. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be working and getting some things here. We're going to dive right in here. But look, tonight's topic is about the Norfolk Council of PTAs um, and how important that group is. Um, and uh, for you to be able to share information with the community. Um, and, uh, you know, so for everybody who's watching, you're probably like, so what am I going to get out of this? You're going to get the opportunity to learn about this dynamic group. Um, but also to learn about how you can be involved, the great work that they're doing to support the, the cause, really in getting into the community and helping us do what we need to do. So, Cherise, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are and uh, what you do and your background? Sure thing. And Carlos, thank you so much for having me on your program tonight. I think what you're doing to engage the community and families is absolutely amazing. And I am so just thrilled and humbled that you have me on your show for tonight. So as you mentioned, I am Sharice Newsom, president of the Norfolk Council of PTAs. I am a Norfolk girl born and raised. I graduated from the mighty Booker T. Washington High School. No shade, Carlos. No shade. <laughs> <laughs> Class of 2001. And I have pretty much remained in Norfolk and am raising my three boys, ages eight, five, and two, with my husband, who's also a Booker. And I am blessed to be able to give back to the community that I care about so much by serving as president of the PTA Council. Great. And so... Um, what does the Norfolk Council PTA, you know, what is it and, and what do they do? Sure. So most people are familiar with individual PTAs at schools and the fact that PTAs help raise funds for schools. They provide programs and support. But the PTA Council helps to support school PTAs. So we are a group of PTA leaders who come together for uh, collaboration to talk about the needs of schools and how we can support them, whether that is through funding or through advocacy, through programs. And we help to keep our PTAs in tip top shape. This is my first year as president for the council PTA, and it has been a wonderful year of growth. And our PTAs are becoming in good standing and they are getting all of their uh, programs in order, their finances in order. And that's due uh, in large part to the collaboration we've had this year by providing that type of support to them. All right. Great. So, Sharice, how did you get involved in the PTA? What led you down that road? So I come from a family of educators. My mom taught in Norfolk Public Schools for 40 years before retiring in 2014. So education is my utmost passion. I have lived with it and it's just so critically important for students. And so when my oldest son was in pre-K, I definitely wanted to be involved. I am admittedly a helicopter parent. So, um, <laughs> you know, I wear that badge with pride. And when so, he... So, so, so explain to people who may not know, what is a helicopter parent? As its name suggests, a helicopter hovers. And so helicopter parents who <laughs> often get a bad rap, we are very hands-on with our children. We want to hover. We want to know what's going on in their lives pretty much all the time. And we want to do what we can to help support them Uh nearby. And so as a helicopter parent, I wanted to be very active and engaged and involved. And I think that's important for all parents and all family members and caregivers to be involved in their children's education. Because when you are, statistically, it has been proven that parent, that students do well and perform better in school. So when my son was in pre-K, I wanted to know who the teachers were, who the um, principal and, you know, assistant principal administration um 
members were. I wanted to know about the programs in the school. And so I wanted I wanted to get involved in the PTA. I wanted to volunteer. I wanted to get familiar with the building that my son would be in pretty much mm -hmm. for the majority of his day. And so, you know, at one of those like assemblies at school, it may have been a music concert. The PTA was there and I signed up. Most PTA memberships at individual schools are around $5 per person, some $5 per family. Um, I don't know any in Norfolk that go above $10. And so mm -hmm. I thought it was important to pledge my dues and pledge my support to help my son at school. And from that, I learned from other parents. I learned from other teachers, you know, what providing, you know, uh, a well-rounded educational system is for not only my child, but for other children. And when mm -hmm. I saw how those relationships I built um, with my son's school really helped him and helped us as a family, I wanted to just scale up and help more students and more families do that. And so I have served as a member, secretary, school president, and um, thankfully I'm now serving as president for the council. And so the council brings together all of the uh, the local at each one of the individual schools. Right, right. Now, you're a part of a much larger group though, right? Yes, that's right. So we are a subunit of the Virginia PTA, which is the statewide PTA organization, which, which is- I have to pause and, and let you know that Donna Colombo, your state president is watching us. Hey, Donna. <laughs> Donna, I can't see. Um, I'm so focused. So hi, Donna. Um, shout out to Donna Colombo, uh, the president of the Virginia PTA and all of the PTA leaders and members and, and friends. I should have started with that. So uh, Donna has been a tremendous support with the Norfolk Council, as has uh, our president-elect, Ms. Pam Kroom, mm -hmm. and our Tidewater District Director Shelly Jones. So mm -hmm. I am so blessed to have just a cadre of support from the state level um, on down. So, um, and even school board members like yourself, Carlos, who've been so supportive, the administration of Norfolk Public Schools. I mean, we really do work well together. Uh, our theme for this year has been in this together. And um, it's kind of become the mantra of getting through COVID-19, which I know we'll talk about a little bit later, but it really does take a village to raise a child as the proverb goes. And so it really does take that network, that village, that support system for PTAs to work well with each other, to work well with school systems, to work well with the community. And so I'm so thankful for, for my village. <laughs> so for those who may not know, so PTA is the Parents and Teachers Association. Yes. So your membership looks like what? So the majority of... Right. The majority of our members are parents okay. and you'll often find that most There is a myth that circles around PTA that you have to be a parent to join or that you have to be a teacher to join, but you don't. While most of our members are parents and many of our members are teachers and educators, we are a group of people who want to support children and what's best for students. So as long as you have a love for students and a love for schools and you want to do all you can to help, you can join. If you're a business member, you can join. If you are a grandparent, you can join. If you are in a civic league, you can join. So um, check out your local school, ask them about their, their PTA, ask how you can get involved and just start from there. All right, all right, all right. So um, I mentioned about the larger group. So you're a part of this, you have a state association, which of course is a part of a much larger and PTA has been around for a long time. It has, and it's actually a part of a national organization. So there's the national PTA, each state has a PTA and then um, each state like Virginia is divided up into regions. And so we're mm -hmm. in the Tidewater region and then there's a council. So for example, in Norfolk, there's 44 schools. So the council represents all those 44 schools and it helps all those, PT all those PTAs. And while most schools have a PTA, some are still working to get one. And so part of the council's job in collaboration with the uh, region and with the state is to get those schools up and running. And that can be a challenge because the families of PTA today look very different from the families of yesteryear. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of diverse types of families and that's a good thing. We have families that um, are run by single parents. We 
have families where there are grandparents helping to care for children. We have families of all different uh, socioeconomic and cultural backgrounds. And so our goal is really to embrace that diversity and say, you are welcome here. We are in this together. And as we band together, we can get what's best for students. So um, it's all of that. <laughs> so now I know a little bit about PTA because I had the opportunity, I think twice, to serve as you all state um, parliamentarian at your mm -hmm. state conference and actually do some training. Dynamic group, love the PTA. Um, but there are conferences that you all have and different training opportunities. So you wanna share a little bit about that? Absolutely. So at the state level, there is an annual conference, which I was so thankful to attend this past January, um, just outside of Richmond. And that's when PTA leaders from across the state come together to talk about issues and trends, our advocacy agenda. We work very closely with the General Assembly and legislators to uh, push for legislation that's going to help students and schools. At the local level, we have uh, trainings really throughout the year. So the district will provide training opportunities and support. And then at the city level, we put on an annual fall training. And this year we've tried to be really creative and engage families in new and exciting ways. And so we have done that through a lot of online programming by having a Zoom account. This year for the first time we instituted childcare at our meetings. Again, going back to the fact that families look a little differently than they did in yesteryear. And so we wanna remain uh, a relevant and convenient option. And so we have the online uh, access, but we also had childcare. When we were able to meet before COVID-19 broke out, uh, we uh, were able to have childcare because we were thinking yeah. about ways to get it. And uh, we also had a student rep uh, on our PTA board for the first time ever. And so that gave us a very unique perspective. So um, the state has, the national PTA has conferences, the state has conferences, the local unit has conferences and programs for its PTAs, but also for families in the community in general. Great. So Donna gave us this little tidbit here to let us know that Virginia PTA is celebrating 100 years on March 21st of 2021. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> awesome. Um, so a very long time the organization's been around. Yes. Um, and has yes. Been pretty much a staple for many years here in Norfolk. Right. Um, right. It's it had a strong history um, here in, in the city and uh, for providing services. I, I remember, I know my mom was a member of the PTA. Um, awesome. When, um, I think she was treasurer at her PTA uh, when I was growing up. So I think you mentioned a little bit about some of the projects that you all have going on. Um, right. we'll talk about some of the, because Norfolk is such a diverse school division. Mm -hmm. um, and so how are you using certain projects and activities to reach um, and to really cater to the diversity that we have within our school div division? Sure. So this year, one of our goals has been to just be visible and present in the community. I mean, Carlos, I believe one of the pictures you're showing is when I visited a local church to mm -hmm. talk about the PTA. And so um, that's actually one of my high school friends, who's a pastor <laughs> in Norfolk, James Davis of the Rising. And so um, as PTA leaders of the Norfolk Council, we've really made it our, um, our mission to get out into the community, to get out to where families are. Because again, being mindful of our diverse families and being mindful of the many challenges that families face, we want to be convenient and relevant to them. So we have done PTA pop-ups at the park. We have gone to a lot of the city fairs and festivals. There was a neighborhood festival that we attended. We went to uh, Nuestra Feria, which mm -hmm. is... Um, a community celebration during Hispanic Heritage Month. And we've gotten out to learn and to embrace and to say we're all in this together. And so that's one of the things that we've done, again, with the online access by providing childcare and just by being visible, by going to school board meetings and um, even our t-shirts. So just to <laughs> let people know, hey, we're here to support you. We do a lot of listening. Um, the PTA Council, we go to individual schools and PTA meetings to find out what are their needs there. Mm -hmm. And we do our best to support them. One of the flat flagship programs of the PTA is our Reflections Arts uh, Competition. Mm -hmm. And so that was tremendous this year for two reasons. One, we have students who are so uh, talented, who, you know, did projects from art to music to choreography and photography. But also because, unfortunately, of the impact of COVID-19, that we weren't able to get together, but we were able to host our Reflections Award Ceremony online. So we've really been intentional about 
reaching out and doing as much as we can to to get to where the families are. That's really good. Um, again, I'm just gonna pause here for those who may be joining us. Um, I'm Carlos Clanton, school board member here, Ward 3, and the vice chairman of the Norfolk City School Board. And you are tuned in to Live with Carlos Clanton. Um, this is a new um, way of engagement that um, I've been kind of a brainchild thinking about doing, especially in this time of uh, COVID-19. And, um, and so many people are online and we're not being able to um, be present individually. But this is a way that we can definitely stay present and connect with one another. Um, and I have with me today, Ms. Sharice Newsom who is our president of the Norfolk Council of PTAs. And we are carrying out a conversation and really educating everyone about what the PTA does, how important it is in our communities and how it's a vital partner um, as we carry out this uh, mission of educating our, our youth, our citizens to, to be the next leaders and business leaders and community leaders, just upstanding citizens here in the city of Norfolk. So welcome to everyone who's just joining us. Um, we're glad to have you here. So talking about that and just bringing up the topic about COVID-19. Um, with that being, you know, it's negatively affected a lot of things. We had to shut down school. Um, kids are now home, they're, they're virtual learning, they're doing homework packets. Um, and there was a lot of momentum that your PTA had. Um, and, and I've been around for a while, you know, having been in a former administrator with the school division um, and now serving on the school board. Um, I know that the PTA has had some strong points and then it's, it's had some moments where it's kind of lulled down a little bit, but there was a lot of energy coming out. And so you get all of that and then it feels like you get a brick wall. But I don't think that you allowed that wall to, to, to stay there very long. So um, how has it affected the Council of PTA and how have you guys uh, kind of managed and worked around it? As you mentioned, Carlos, COVID-19 has impacted just about everything you know, we all do in our daily lives. And so first and foremost, we want to be safe and we want to be careful. We want to protect our children and we just want to stay alive. And so I know that's everybody's focus as it should be. You know, Virginia's uh, leadership has taken some very measured steps to keep us safe. And while the school closures have been difficult because uh, parents like me are home with three young children, full of energy. Um, I am thankful that our children um, are safe and that efforts are being made to keep them safe. So I'm very thankful about that. And um, yeah, the COVID, you know, did throw a little wrench in our plans for PTA this year. But again, I'm thankful that we have been able to adapt despite the challenges of COVID-19. So while many of our in-school activities have changed and slowed. And in some cases, we just couldn't do them. We found ways to be creative. So mm -hmm. as I just mentioned earlier, we had our Reflections Award ceremony online. We were able to use oh, our Zoom great. platform to have a, um, a, a slideshow of all of the students' artwork and photography. And, you know, they were able to hear kudos. And we, you know, we had our state president, Ms. Donna Colombo, to give remarks. We had the superintendent of Norfolk Public Schools, Dr. Sharon Birdsong, to uh, give remarks and words of encouragement. She has been um, just a very faithful supporter of the PTA. And I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Birdsong because I really appreciate her. Um, you know, she's officially now the superintendent for Norfolk Public Schools, and we are all working together and collaboratively. I'm thankful for, um, again, Carlos, school board members like you who, you know, have come to our PTA meetings, you listen to the needs of parents, you're even using this platform to engage them. And so we take our cues from leaders like you and we adapt them to the needs of families. And so we host things online, we hosted a family yoga night online and we're having our election online. And so we're finding these ways to stay connected as best as possible to adapt to the changing um, environment due to COVID-19 and to meet our families where they are. Great. When you, um, I was reading and going through some of the information. So yoga, family yoga night online. And so, you know, we're also seeing like fitness, uh, you know, a lot of the gyms are doing things online. Um, but we're looking at a picture here actually from your reflections contest and Donna Colombo, the state president's up there in the upper right hand corner um, and Shelly uh, Jones, your uh, district director is also down there. Um, but very, uh, very innovative way to make sure that kids didn't miss out on right. because a lot of them have been working on projects and the reflection yes. contest has an assortment of different contests that they they prepare for. Right. And right. Absolutely. Like, what, what are some of those contests look like? 
So they have um, a photography category, choreography, they have um, art and they have um, music. And so we were able to use this platform to still showcase that work to unveil the winners. I mean, kids were in suspense and we just, we pretty much just needed a virtual drum roll and we would have had the whole ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> down pat, but you know, it was a great way for the kids and the families to come together because they did put a lot of hard work into this. We had some of the art teachers sign on as well. So, you know, it was a great way to celebrate students and it was a great way to provide inspiration to students to show them, here's what you can do. We also have students to go on to place at the state level. So we have some very talented students in Norfolk Public Schools, some very dedicated PTA leaders and educators who are pushing them along the way. And so we just have to be creative and find new ways to engage them again even as you're doing now to stay connected as best as possible soon we will be able to get together and see each other with social distancing in place but until then let's do what we can definitely and so i know that um one of the roles that you all play um you know you do the contest um, but pta is also an advocacy group um and so would you like to share some of the um advocacy things that you all are working on Yes. And I'm so glad you brought that up because oftentimes when people think about the PTA, they're very familiar with our fundraising efforts, you know, the bake sales and the spring carnivals. And we do a lot for Teacher Appreciation Week because we appreciate our teachers. We appreciate educators. Um, we do a lot of music programs and contests. But a our main mission is really to, um, you know, push and support every child and make their potential a reality. And so we are advocates. And it was really important to the PTA board this year to make sure that we were using our collective voices to speak up for children. Every child, one voice. That is a slogan of our national PTA. And we all embrace and embody that. And so for the first time ever this year, we um, developed um, a position statement. They're also called resolutions. And so what that is, is after long discussions and conversations about what the needs of our schools are, we came up with a list of things that we wanted to speak on. Now, there were many. And so we just came up with one so far, but it was on school maintenance. And I'm very proud of the, um, the students even who are participating in this process, our student rep, Maya Prasad who um, attends Moore High School. She's a senior there. And so she talked about some of the conditions of the school. We heard from parents about you know, some of the conditions of the schools and how we pretty much needed more support if we wanted to improve our schools. And we know that school maintenance had also been the area of concern for the school board. I mean, you all have been looking at this issue very closely as well and trying to figure out what can we do. And so as we lend our voices and support, with parents and with the community, with the school board, we were able to come up with this position statement that says school maintenance is of critical importance. It affects um, how our children learn and we want what's best for them. And so we took that message to our parents and PTAs and schools. We took that message to the school board and together we took that message to the city council and virtual drum roll. I am <laughs> very, very proud to say that that effort has been successful because despite the very challenging and cash strap budget that our city faces, yep. city council approved, if I'm not mistaken, $9 million yep. for school maintenance. So it wasn't, you know, maybe everything we had hoped for, but, you know, given the hardships that, you know, the city and the state are facing financially, I mean, I still consider that a big win and a victory. So it matters using your voice to speak up yep. for kids and their needs, working collaboratively with school officials and city officials, we can get it done. And so I'm glad the PTA played a role in that. Yes, you did. And I, I will have to say that um, I remember a, um, a visit that I uh, went to go to actually a public meeting um, at Sherwood Forest. Um, Dr. Gabriel uh, uh, made it there after coming off of, uh, from work and another council um, school board member of mine, Doc, uh, Del Martin, very soon to be Dr. Martin. Um, we're there. And I remember at a certain point, um, we engaged with the parents that were there who were just, you know, they were upset and had every right to be. Um, and, and I'm at a situation that was very tough. Um, we, we stuck it all the way through and the parents were very appreciative because we listened. Um, right. And the thing that I was really excited to hear <clears throat> was that like a month after that situation, Sherwood Forest was chartering their PTA. Yes. Um, and a lot of those same parents yes. who were frustrated were now challenging and channeling 
that energy uh, and that activism and, uh, and that voice into the PTA to organize yes. and mobilize other parents um, and to advocate for their schools. So yes. I appreciate you all being that voice and being that partner um, and helping to get the word out there and really just to get our parents because we can't educate our students if our parents aren't engaged. Um, and that's a critical part. And you know, a lot of our kids are in different type of high households, right. but those grandparents, aunts, uncles, um, caring adults who want to see our kids succeed, there's a place for them in the PTA. And That's um, right. I'm so excited about that. Um, we've got a lot of people who are joining now. Uh, okay. shout out, um, um, I see my good friend, Benita Anthony's there and former administrator in Norfolk Public Schools, Gene Jones. Uh, my fraternity brother, the Reverend Keith Jones is online. We've got a lot of folks, uh, Cassell Persons, um, uh, Assistant Principal Alexis Rogers. I mean, just so many who are joining us. Um, and I appreciate you all hopping on. Um, this is not for uh, any form of fashion for me. I really wanted to figure out a way, how do we engage and how do we get information out there? So I think we're having a good time. Don't you think we so are, you? we are. <laughs> and people are being appreciative of the information. So this is good. Um, so we're, uh, we're literally at like 729. I had planned for like a whole hour on this day <laughs> to talk about. But um, so how does a person get involved in a PTA though? Right. So it is very simple. In Norfolk, there are pr probably two main ways. The first is to get involved at a local school. And so if you have a child in a school system or you have, I mean, in an individual school or you um, have a school in your neighborhood, check out their PTA ask to join. You can join at any time. Oftentimes you'll see the PTA members collecting memberships, you know, during school concerts or the back to school nights and things like that. So sign up again, membership at most schools is about $5. Some go as high as 10. And um, it's a great way to just get involved and to show your support. And those funds not only go for, towards your membership, but they go to help support programs in the school. And the other way you can join is by becoming a member um, at the council level. So our council is made up of the individual school PTAs who pay dues into there. But this year, for the first time, we establish a PTA partner program. And I'm very mm -hmm. excited about this, Carlos, because I had so many people saying, I want to be of help and support to the PTA, not only at my neighborhood school, not only at my child's school, but throughout the city. And mm -hmm. um, I remember when I worked in Portsmouth Public Schools, um, which also has a phenomenal PTA. I yeah. live in Miss Donna Clifton. She is definitely a mentor. So I could not even get through this without giving her a shout yeah, out because she's fantastic. <laughs> she is fantastic. And, you know, she, again, she's part of that village that I mentioned earlier with mm -hmm. Donna Colombo at the state level and Pam Croom and Shelly Jones. And, you know, Donna Clifton um, is definitely a mentor as well. And so um, they had something similar. And so we brought that over to Norfolk and and you can become a member of all of the PTAs in Norfolk, right? Like, why just settle for one when you can be a PTA member at all the schools? Oh, <laughs> and so uh, for our PTA partnership program, for a generous donation of $250, you can become a member of each and every active PTA in the city of Norfolk. And so the great thing about this program is that money is divided up and sent to the individual schools. And that was really important too. I didn't want people to think that the council was just, you know, getting all of that money. No, the council is here to be a support to our local units, um, not only through training, but financially as well. And so that program has helped to put money right back into the hands of our individual units for membership, to help with programs, and just as a sign of support to say, we're in this together and we've got your back. So go to our website, NorfolkPTA.org, to learn more about the benefits. But in short, we give a shout out to each and every one of our members. You have access access to all of our local units and the programs that they put on. Oftentimes there are special giveaways and discounts that you can take part in. And then when we, um, you know, have been able to get together as a council, then you're also invited to take part in that as well. And it just shows that you are a supporter of uh, the PTA throughout the city. And so I encourage all of you, business owners, community members, civic organizations, your organization can join the PTA. You may, um, also want to volunteer. Um, the PTA is a nonprofit organization, so it's also tax deductible when you when you join. So consider doing that. Again, visit our website for more more details. Definitely, and and I have to say, this was something I wanted to do all year long. And so online, 
I am joining <clears throat> the P PTA partnership. And so the chat can the address up there so that I can uh, make sure I make that contribution. Thank you. I'm thank you. Great work that's happening there. I also want to tell those who are watching, um, if you have a question um, or a comment that you'd like to share, um, put that in the chat box. Um, I can actually share those up on the screen. Um, if you've got questions for Sharice, yes. um, I can definitely um, add those there as well. Um, we, I see D Hamlet, who was a long time CTE teacher at Booker T. Washington High School. Yes. Um, <laughs> My mom's colleague. Hi, Ms. Hamlet. Hey. My mom. <laughs> <laughs> And who is um, also a member of the Booker T. Washington Advisory um, Task Force. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad to see so many individuals who are joining us, um, Norfolk Public School alum, um, individuals across the country who are actually logged on. I, I see um, someone as far as California. We've got oh, wow. Georgia, um, who are on and who are, who are um, joining us in this conversation here. Um, but Therese, we, We've talked about PTA and, and we've um, and, uh, now you have an interesting, I want to go back to you a little bit, interesting okay. career because you, you said you've, you've been connected with Norfolk um, <laughs> before you graduated and we can't hold against you that, you know, that you didn't that graduate. I, that I went to the best high school in Norfolk. Is that what you said, Carlos? Well, I represent Ward. Ward was the best high school. Is that what you said? No, they're all great. They're all great. <laughs> but you also covered Norfolk. You worked with the Virginia pilot as a uh, pilot writer. And, yes. Um, and I take it that your major in college was what? Actually, so my major in college was theology and I minored in English. Wow. So, uh, yes. And so oftentimes people think that I was a journalism major. I actually was not. So I attended Georgetown University in D.C. And um, I had a love for journalism. So I always did internships. And I started writing for the local newspaper, the Virginia Pilot, when I was 17 years old. They had a teen section called the 757, which is the area code for our mm -hmm. region. Mm -hmm. And I began writing there. And a lot of the reporters there would mentor the younger uh, writers. And I'm one of those people who just kind of stuck around and kept in touch. And even though I went away to school, I came back home, did internships over the summer and um, over winter break. And I was hired after I graduated from Georgetown. And um, I worked in just about every um, bureau office that the newspaper had. And I covered a number of beats from City Hall, to community news, to the zoo, to all kinds of things. Um, but my favorite beat, um, what I say is the best beat of the paper is the education beat. So I covered Suffolk schools. I covered Chesapeake schools. Um, I covered Norfolk public schools. And they got it. There you have it. Yes. So Therese, um, people want to join. We've already talked about it. They can go to the website. Um, but yes. we also want to encourage them to follow you because you also have a social media presence. Absolutely. Um, so how about that? Yes. Yeah, so there are multiple ways to keep in touch with the Norfolk Council of PTAs. We are on Instagram at Norfolk PTA. We are on Facebook at Norfolk Council of PTAs. And we're on Twitter at Norfolk PTA. And so social media is a great tool to stay connected. And it's a great way for families to stay connected because you can find out what's going on. Um, for example, especially during COVID-19, we've used our social media pages to push out information from the school division and from um, the state about meals and where kids can get mm -hmm. food, um, as well as the learning and academic resources that the state is providing through uh, WHRO and, and the public um, access channel. So follow our social media pages to just stay connected. We post the great things that are going on in Norfolk Public Schools. We post, post the great things that are going on with our individual units. Again, many of them doing fantastic things even during the shutdown from sewing face masks for staff who are still having to go into school buildings yeah. to you know, celebrating teachers in creative ways during Teacher Appreciation Week. So follow us on social media to stay connected. Definitely. Go online so that you can turn in um, and find out what, uh, you know, what school you could potentially, and you right. don't have to have a child in school to be involved in a right. PTA. Um, right. So um, I'm going to ask if there's any, I know we've got some folks here hanging around there. If there's anybody who has any questions, um, don't see any right off the bat there. Uh, but I will say this, um, Sharice, it has been a pleasure to have you yeah. on um, to share um, about the Norfolk Council of PTAs and to help me kick off um, these live sessions. Um, and so I, I just want to say, I appreciate you as a fellow Norfolk Public School alum, 
whether or not which high school we went to, we were right. all NPS. <laughs> right, exactly. We're in this together. We in so, this together. Yes. So thank so you again for what you do on the school board. It is critically important. I mean, you all have a lot of challenges before you. I thank you also for having an open ear when we do have questions or comments or concerns for hearing us out. I mean, um, in my former you know, job as a reporter and even now, I know that you all have a lot on your plates that you have to get through in those meetings and between meetings. And you really um, do all you can to serve your constituents. So I'm thankful for you and your colleagues on the school board, um, all school year I've had a you know opportunity to engage with you all. Uh, you do answer your emails and you take phone calls and you're visible and you're present and, and you're you're just out in the community. And I think that's really important because when you are you hear more about what's going on and then we can share and learn and just work together. So thank you. I appreciate that so much. And uh, you know I couldn't have a better person help me kick this off here. Everyone who's watching um, or sending um, accolades great information. Um, and so all I can say is this won't be the last. I'll get you when we're, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. For, all for school. Uh, but we know that we'll have our partners there with the PTA yes. Um, yes. and that you guys are going to do um, and are going to really be there to help us uh, keep our parents and our teachers and just our That's community right. engaged as we move forward. Um, wait a minute. I think I've got one thing here. Uh, <clears throat> speak on diversion and inclusion. How does your PTA reach your Hispanic population when there are possible language barriers? Well, I've got a question for you. That is a great question. And to be quite frank, we are working on that. And so our um, uh, one of our committee members, Ms. Viviana Fullwood, has helped us with translation uh, services for um, our Spanish speaking families when we've had mm -hmm. programs in person. And so, for example, we had a family uh, paint night, excuse me, a family vision board night at the Academy for um, Discovery at Lakewood. And so Viviana was there helping families. We had um, a representative from the Chrysler, Cody Long and um, um, Clayton Singleton, uh, uh, an awesome uh, artist and Nova Public Schools art teacher to come and lead families in putting together a vision board for the year. And so uh, Viviana, who's also a member of the Hispanic uh, Chamber of Commerce in Hampton Roads was there to provide those services. But again, it's also about engaging and embracing and learning. And so, as I mentioned earlier this year, we attended the New West Feria, which is a celebration held at Lakewood Park during Hispanic Heritage Month. And it was a great way for to meet families from um, many backgrounds, but especially our Latinx families and find out about um, their cultural traditions and their needs and how I can support and be a part of them and even share that feedback with school officials. And so we are able to do some of that um, in person mm -hmm. at our meetings. We um, are continuously working on ways to do that, even on our digital platforms. So um, if you have any ideas or suggestions, please let us know. We're open to learning that. Um, check out our website or email us at NorfolkPTA at gmail.com. And um, we'd love to you know, even learn more and find out about more needs and how we can help. Um, you know, Norfolk is a very diverse city in terms of cultural and socioeconomic backgrounds, in terms of family types. And I am committed to equity and I'm committed to embracing and celebrating all of our diverse, diverse cultures and families in Norfolk. And so whether those are families um, needing uh, language services supports or whether there are families needing convenient access um, online, whether there are families needing childcare at meetings like me, because I have three of them. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out how you got it so quiet right now. <laughs> Oh, that's because my husband has them. And, and I said, take them in the van. <laughs> Y'all can ride around, go to grandma's house. Um, but he is he's my PTA partner and I'm so thankful for him. But the reality is, again, you know, families today look um, and operate differently than families of yesteryear. And that's um, a good thing, right? That we are more diverse and that the needs are different. And so um, we're not all cookie cutter families. And even for me as a mom with three young children working outside of the home, um, and let me remind everyone that PTA is a volunteer job. Okay, right? I don't even know why I'm saying job. It's volunteer. It's a job. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's all volunteer. So um, I understand the needs of uh, working families. I understand the needs of, as I like to say, busy working mamas. I understand the needs mm -hmm. of um, families 
um, single parent households and I understand the needs of families who are struggling to make ends meet. And I understand that we have families of different backgrounds that I want to learn from. And so PT is a great way to do that. Um, at our fall training this year, we had um, a whole session on engaging diverse families. And, you know, I actually did not lead that session. I sat down and I listened and I learned. I think as a leader, we have to remain humble and nimble and realize that, you know, we're always uh, to be continuously learning and growing and finding what we can do to help uh, more people. And so um, I'm thankful for people like um, you who asked that question and others who, um, you know, just want to, you know, provide suggestions and ideas about ways we can we can help. Definitely. We got another question that just came in um, uh, asking, what is the PA, PTA doing in the community to promote the census? That's great. So the Virginia PTA has pushed out a lot of information about taking the census and even the maps of um, kind of responsive levels. Mm -hmm. And so the Norfolk PTA is going to help push that out. And so it's just about awareness and encouraging people to participate and um, and to take it. I know, you know, when those notices come in the mail or you may have seen the commercials, you, yeah. you know, you put it off and you say, oh, I'll get to it. But it's critically important because we know that um, information and details provided through the census helps to determine funding and programs and where resources are provided. So please take time to fill it out, um, especially now that you have a little bit more time. Don't wait. I'm not saying do that, but, um, you know, and please. Like even this year, you can do it online. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. right. So, um, so do that. Take the census, please. Um, you know, we like to be data driven. You know, we hear that term a lot in kind of education speak. And so um, even school districts use that data to be able to determine kind of where needs are. And so please take the census. It's really important. <laughs> Great. Um, I've, we've got another one here. So Ms. Edwards is, um, she's a school counselor. Um, she said they had to address a lot of social and emotional issues, learners and families, social and emotional concerns on the rise um, post pandemic. Um, can you talk about how the PTA can support in this way? And I love Norfolk and um, and she has fam and Rona. Okay, great. Awesome. <laughs> excellent, excellent question. So one of the things that the uh, PTA did even prior to the, the outbreak, the pandemic, was mm -hmm. that the, the state PTA, one of our um, kind of legislative action items was to support more counselors in schools because we know that children need that um, social emotional support and that social emotional learning is just as important as any other subject in school. And so I'm thankful that the Virginia PTA has been really proactive in ensuring that there's attention paid to those needs. I'm also thankful that um, the governor who has um, launched several committees looking at um, kind of the aftermath of COVID-19, the impact on students and families in establishing those committees has appointed Virginia PTA representatives to be on that, on those committees. And so even today, Ms. Donna Colombo, I'm not sure if she's still up here, but, you know, she sent out um, information about the committee and the things that they're looking at and how families can, um, and PTA leaders such as myself can even provide information and feedback on um, how we will need to support our students moving forward. I think it's going to be critically important. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think about, again, my children, um, especially my oldest son, who has friends and who's been out of school for a long time yeah. and even may have worries and fears about being careful and being safe. You know, I'm always like, you know, just use hand sanitizer. You know, we may go outside and play in the yard and come in. I'm like, just use hand sanitizer. Did you wash your hands? You know, and these are all great habits. But at the same time, they can increase um um, you know, the emotions and the anxiety um, in all of us, but even children. And so um, I think one of the ways we do that is by providing that feedback um, from my standpoint through my PTA channels directly to the governor to say that when schools reopen, this this level of support definitely has to be in place, um, you know, for children um, and students, but also for staff members. You know, I've had a lot of teachers tell me how much they miss their students being in school, um, how much of a change and an adjustment this is, and how, quite frankly, even getting back into some sense of normalcy probably won't happen right away, that it'll take time. And so um, I think that by sharing that feedback, um, the PTA, we put out a survey asking our families, the Norfolk Council of the PTA, asking our families to share with us their needs moving forward so that we can advocate for that level of support once schools reopen and even prior to them reopening. Definitely. Thank you. Um, we've had a great discussion. Um, <laughs> thank you all for the question. <laughs> yeah. we added some additional things that we've talked about census, uh, social, emotional, post-pandemic, through the pandemic. 
Um, and, and again, how PTA is vitally important in helping us to get that message out there. Um, census is very, very important. So for everybody, the public service announcement is complete your census. It's how we determine everything um, every 10 years, our representation, the dollars for your schools, um, which will help fund our classrooms, um, will help us at the local level when it's time to fund school construction. Um, so, you know, these are all things that are critically important in Norfolk. Um, so you all, your friends, family, to everybody, yes. everybody in them, right? Um, complete your census. That's yes. what I'm Don is also saying um, Virginia PTA is also going to continue to serve our communities to be that voice for all of our students, teachers, including the staff and families. And and I and I and I can hold true to that. I know that Virginia PTA is very strong, um, and yes. that our PTA units across the Commonwealth of Virginia um, are active. Um, and they, and from a state level and a district level, are actively working with each of these units to to ensure that they're the very best they can possibly be. Great yes. training conferences uh, when yes. PTA storms on the state capitol, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we did that this year, and you know, since the moment this pandemic hit, I mean, I have gotten emails, phone calls, text messages from the PTA state level, district level, regional level, my my PTA peers, as I call them, just reaching out to find out how we can support. And, you know, for a while, it's just about information sharing. It's about checking in and asking, how are you doing? Like, how are you really doing? I mean, again, just being transparent, I'm a mother who is working from home with three young children. My husband um, goes out to work still, even during this pandemic. And so that is a lot, you know, being mom and and employee and yeah. teacher is a lot um, um, to do all in a day, <laughs> along yeah. with fold laundry. So <laughs> um, I'm thankful for, you know, my again, my village and that support that the PTA provides just to check in on parents to see how is it going? I mean, um, one of the things, you know, Carlos, we've had some really frank conversations. And again, mm -hmm. I'm just thankful for you being so open. You know, we talked about those learning packets, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the importance of continuous learning, but also just being realistic and saying, this is very new for mm -hmm. students and families. And we don't want students to be negatively impacted mm -hmm. um, by this abrupt change that, you know, none of us had any control over. And so, you know, how can we continue to meet the needs of students and be mindful of the, the challenges and pressures that families are facing? And I'm so thankful for Norfolk Public Schools for being mindful of that. And, um, you know, provided that educational support and even with the technology, distributing the technology mm -hmm. once the Chromebooks and um, the internet hot sauce became available, I know there are plans to increase that um, as well. There should be because we know there are a lot of families who can benefit from that. And so um, I think, we, you know, when we say we're in this together, we really have to be in it. We have to check on one another. Um, we have to speak up for one another. We have to help one another and um, we'll get through it. Definitely. Well, everybody, um, again, I want to thank Sharice Newsom, president of the Norfolk Council of PTA, um, for not only being my guest, my inaugural guest, to kick off on Live for Carlos Clan, uh, but this is an initiative of mine as a member of our Norfolk City School Board, representing Ward 3, and I serve, had the honor of serving as vice chairman of the board. Um, but during this time, now more than ever, like Sharice said, we're in this together. We've got to connect. And so I'm going to continue to work to bring on individuals um, to share information from the school division level. Um, I'm working on getting both members of our council that represent Ward 3 um, on uh, conversation, our school board chairwoman, Dr. Noel Gabriel, and others. Um, and, you know, and others who honestly, I may not always agree with um, and see eye to eye with, but we need to be able to exchange conversation and, and right. ideas. And so I'm looking forward um, to doing that. So everybody, please give shout outs again to, um, to Sharice Newsom for Thank uh, you. being with us here. Um, and one of the things that um, I am, uh, I was telling Sharice that I'm gonna be doing as a part of this is uh, kind of giving my closing thoughts um, and uh, just to share some things with you there. Um, so I'd also encourage you all to go, if you're not following my Facebook page, follow me at Carlos Clanton for NPS. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Carlos Clanton for NPS and as well as Twitter. And that's just CJ Clanton for NPS. Um, so I encourage you to go out there, um, you know, follow me. I'm always trying to share information, trying to be a resource. I'm trying to give you the right information. I try to you know, do my due diligence and not just put uh, fear mongering things out there. But I also created a, um, a website um, for my constituents. So there are resources there 
um, both for parents, um, students who are preparing for college work, um, as well as looking at opportunities um, to prepare for, um, you know, in, even in this, uh, uh, this, this age of COVID right now. Um, if there are parents, um, families who are, um, who have been negatively affected, who are um, unemployed, um, who need food and, and so forth. There's Resource 757, the, the United Way. Um, my agency, I work for a community action agency, is also about to release information so that we can help and definitely being able to work with the PTA and others um, to share that information is gonna be vitally important. Um, and so Sharice, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna share with everyone here, um, with you all, um, a, um, a uh, kind of a quote that I thought was very, um, Telling and when you're trying to think about everything that we had and we discussed here today, one of my favorite, he's also my fraternity brother, um, Alpha Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, for those who may not know. Um, but uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he said um, in one of his quotes, We may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. And so when I think about that here, and I think about even today and what we're going through um, and the challenges that we're dealing with here, um, that we've got to work together. Um, and I know that many individuals <clears throat> are looking at, um, you know, we just had an election um, and, you know, and we see what the paper and other things write down there. Um, but I challenge our community. I challenge all of those in our community um, to challenge us as your elected representatives, as your voices, um, to do better, um, to work together. And regardless of what um, our opinions may be, we're in the same boat. Um, and that we've got to work together through this situation here today to get us on the other side. We've got to do it for our more than 30,000 kids here in Norfolk Public Schools, our more than 8,000 um, employees in our division and the citizens of the city of Norfolk and abroad. Um, so I thank you all for just allowing me the opportunity uh, to be a voice, uh, to listen and to allow me to share. Um, but most importantly, please uh, reach out to me, tweet to me, send a message. Uh, if you've got some show ideas or individuals you'd like to, um, to see up here or yourself, let me know. I wanna be able to share that information and continue to be a resource. Um, I wasn't elected to serve in a seat uh, for a title. Anybody knows that's that me. I'm gonna work day in and day out to ensure that I'm representing and serving as a voice for our people. So with that, thank you all, enjoy your night um, and have a safe Memorial Day weekend and please observe the safety measures. Um, we are still in the middle of a pandemic, y'all. Um, so peace, love. Y'all take care.